M0FXB, welcome to my channel. AOR, AR, DV10, all mode, all bands, scanner. It does receive DMR, D-Star Fusion and HF bands. So it's pretty, pretty good scanner. I know it's still got the black and white screen, but it's, uh, it's quite an awesome scanner. So I thought I'd just spend a few minutes here uh, going through the buttons. I've not got this scanner. I'm just learning the buttons. And uh, so when I do get it, I will be familiar. This is what I always do. Go to the manual, got a photograph on the right hand side. We've got some of the obvious things there as soon as you look at the scanner. Uh, we will go through every single number on the instruction manual, but quickly, just very briefly, if you look at the scanner, you've got menu, mode, record, clear, lock, you've got a keypad, you've got an enter button, right and left button, which is also up and down. Uh, and then you've got the screen. It's not touch screen, it, you know, the screen is is you know you maneuver it using the right and left arrows and on top you've got volume and well is it channel change let's find out so we'll have a look here now if anyone uh, asks what these cost they're about 900 pounds they cost a lot but you can just sit there with this scanner and listen to pretty much everything with the right antennas so let's start at the top we've got antenna jack is a bnc so that's number one number two is the antenna ring okay there's a ring there Number three, volume is the inner knob, so we know what that one does. Number four, dial selector outer knob, tunes the frequency up and down and selects menu items. Yeah, okay, pretty good. Uh, number five is, let's go down, number five is the screen, liquid crystal display 2.7 inch. Number six is cursor keys, that's your right, left, and also acts as up and down. Then it says the enter button speaks for itself number seven display menu top screen so you'll make when you first go into the menu you hit you know you hit menu uh, number eight is your mode it display displays the receive modes menu so that is big I've seen it and it's big it's like D star DMR fusion p25 NXDN and more you know and more I think one's called a Linko. it just goes on same goes for the DV1 you've got your record key here Going down, you've got the clear key, so it's a cancel button. Then you've got the lock key, which is number 11. Here, number 12 is your keypad. 13 is loudspeaker. On the left side, we have micro SD card, and you can program this device with just the micro SD card. You don't have to put it in the radio. You've got number 15 is your squelch money. So if you've got a shift and you push it, you're gonna hear the input. Number 14 is on off. I press and hold for three seconds. All rubber covers must be closed to keep the IPX5 uh, waterproofing. On the right hand side, 3.5 mil jack. Then you've got USB mini socket. Lift the rubber cover to connect the USB cable for command control. No AOR software supplied. And I've been looking at software for this device. There's a couple out there. There's one uh, made by oh I've got is made by uh, Marcus, uh, which is very looks very good, uh, specifically for this device. Um, and there's another one there by Butel a Butel uh, ARC. They make one as well. Uh, extension DC jack, so you can't charge it with a USB cable. You have to have the extension jack plugged into it or put it into the the cradle. On the rear panel, you've got the belt clip screws there at the top. Number 21, belt clip, number 22. Only use a supplied lithium battery pack. And I've noticed that with some unboxing that I've watched, they do supply a AA battery pack as well for charging, pretty good. Uh, bottom panel is one of those push ones, very similar to my, my Yaesu FT70. Then we start to look at the LCD's display. Now there it is VFO A, VFO B. So I'm hoping that it's dual receive. We'll find out when we test it. And once you're on that screen, so when you, if you click the clear and just go back to the main screen, you can go right and left to go A and B. So VFO A, VFO B, lots of information on the screen. Record, battery, time, step by the looks of it. And mode is here is Yesu, but it makes sense most of the time just to select auto and you'll be able to sit there and listen to all your hotspots, repeaters, uh, regardless of the mode with one device. And I don't think there's any other you know, device scanner that does this apart from the DV1. 
start to look at the icons and so we've got lock uh, remote control status okay so you can remote it uh, i think that means you can control it from outside your home with the right software recording battery status then vfo memory scan and search fm15 demodulates modes if band in kilohertz or hertz and then you've got all this showing look including these other items or the yesu mode here and look at this c4fm d star dmr tier one and two uh, dcr nxdn dpmr a link of i didn't even know what that was p25 and then tetra and you do have to add an upgrade to use tetra uh, i believe i think the the device with the new firmware is enabled tetra I think there's extra activation. There is that auto detection of digital modes. And I've been told that the way Tetra works, it's like DMR where you have uh, DMR split into two time slots, isn't it? So the channel is cut in half. Well, Tetra is like it's cut in four pieces. That's what someone told me. Okay, I don't know. Frequency step, you can adjust VFO. So VFO A received frequency in megahertz. The current received VFO is shown on the upper line. Okay. So I'm still not sure if it's dual receive. For memory channel readout, just going down through here very quickly. Uh, upper side, lower side, memories, search. Remember, I've never used this device. Busy, so that's your squelch. That's your S meter, which we can see on the right hand side, quite basic looking. Micro SD card, card ready. So if you can see the card on the screen, it means the card is ready. And what we've we got here, noise squelch, frequency step, level squelch, offset frequency. We've seen all the little characters you'll see on the screen here, AGC. Details of incoming signal information comes through. Well, that's interesting. Repeat one, repeat two. Is that all the D star information? A and B. I'm just scanning now. Because you know, it would be here all day. There's your your battery being removed. That's your. You can either plug it into the cradle, which does come with the device, or in straight into the radio. Read all the safety stuff. There's your alkaline thing. BT10. Tell you how to do that. I, I I do believe it comes with the cigarette lighter as well. Adapter. I think that's in the box. Antenna. As far as I can see, you get two antennas, an uh, extendable one and um, the one that screws into the BNC one. VFO mode, let's have a look here. VFO A, VFO B and VFO Z. Now I've noticed that, that they do this with the DV1 where you have three VFOs. The a, so the AR DV10 has three VFOs. I didn't know that. So it is the same as the DV1. Each VFO has independent receive frequency demodulation mode frequency step each see settings however only one vfo can be selected and received at a time so it's single receive so you could set up say you know three it looks like it only shows two yeah i'm not sure um but you could set say you set up three one's dmr one's d star and one's fusion it looks to me like you're only ever going to hear one but the chances are that not always are all three going to be active so that's still a very useful feature and I'm not sure how to access VFO Z. So it says to select VFO A, press menu and enter, and enter twice. To select VFO B, press menu and enter, and you use the right arrow to select VFO B, then press enter and to select VFO Z. Um, use the right arrow to select VFO Z and then press enter. So I'm, I'm curious to know what that looks like on the screen. So does B change to a Z? You can type in the frequency in VFO, mode, in VFO mode to select VFO mode and then you can directly enter the frequency in megahertz with the keypad and validate by pressing entry and ENT. Uh, turn in the dial or select a knob, that's another way of changing the frequency. Enter the keys fast tuning method. That's good. Receive mode select. Now I've seen this, this menu. Once you go into mode, D star, Yesu DMR, and then the other items that we listed earlier, quite a few. I'm trying to think of another device that does this, and I cannot think of one apart from the DV1. 
Just scrolling down. So we are getting there. So as all, I mean, modern ham radios, scanner radios, scanner receivers, they are packed with function. So you've got your basic menu there, you're scrolling down, look, as you go VFO, edit, and you're scrolling down with all these different items. Squelch type, offset, record, CTCSS, VFO parameters, tuning steps, important for scanning. There's your tuning steps, shown there as well. I highly, re actually, this is quite a good manual, actually. I'm not finding it super recording. You can decide how you, in, in what mode you record, whether it's audio or a file. Start and stop, you need the SD card by the looks of it. Start, stop. How to skip blanks, okay. So you can skip empty files, I guess, that have been recorded for the audio. Probably you can play this back on your PC, I would say, using the right software. The receiver cannot format SD card, so you have to do that, and it says it here at the sdcard.org downloads formatter, so they've got a link there for you. Memory channel and scan operations, 2,000 memory channels divided into 40 banks of 50, common with scanners. Save a frequency to a memory channel, yeah, can be done. We will actually do that with the radio. Scrolling down, so frequency mode, IFBW. IF bandwidth, rotate the selector knob to toggle frequency pass on off. Protect, I saw this one. If you turn protect on, I believe you can't change the set the uh, memory settings. Squelch, squelch type, DCS code, AGC offset, scan and memory bank to scan, and it tells you how there. Copy a scanned channel to VFO. That's good, yeah, it's gonna be needed. To switch to memory channel browser during scan. Yeah. Scan pass. The scan pass function may be marked as a memory channel to be ignored during scan. This is useful to temporarily disable memory channels. So this is like an avoid. They have this on Unidom. So if it keeps stopping on a certain channel, you can you can select pass and it will avoid it. Browse memory banks. There is free editing software that comes with this device and it works from a browser. It's not really, I wouldn't call it software. It's actually a browser. I do have a link to it. I'll just, I've got a massive long list of links here, but I will, I will show you it because it's quite good and you will be using it. So let's see if it'll open in a new tab, open a new tab. There it is there. And you open files or new file there, look and DV1, DV10, and there's the nice thing is there's an instruction here. So read through this. I've been using it, and as far as I can see, it's taking a while to load, but as far as I can see, we'll come back to that when it's loaded. As far as I can see, it's easy to load a load of files from Radio Reference UK, ETC, uh, you, you really you need to load the bulk of everything you want to be scanning in one go. So but you can bring it in in separate parts, but then you, you bring it into one file and then you finalize it and you can upload it to your SD card. Now they, it does allow you to save what they call uh, a memory file, a memory channel file or a default template file. I've not learned the difference of that yet. I was thinking that a template file might be the file that when you save memory channels to your SD card on the radio, you can then, that's the file you can change and turn it into a memory channel file. But I've been playing, I've done a couple of videos using the software. It's not overly complicated, but it's like anything, you still gotta learn it. It's a learning curve to everything. So assign titles to memory banks. So that's handy, if we can name memory banks, it's gonna be nicer. Create a group of linked memory banks for scanning. Now remember, when you buy a scanner, there's there's a lot to, to take on board. It's not like a ham radio where you turn on your HF radio, type in the frequency and you're talking to someone, or you turn on your VHF, UHF, put in your local repeater, shift, tone, and start chatting. It, the scanning way of doing things is that you load hundreds or even thousands of frequencies that you enjoy into groups, into banks, and then you sit there and just scan everything, all modes, all bands, and just enjoy the scanning experience. And then as you, you discover new things, and then you can save them as well. 
Um, so, or like, you, like you're scanning and like, oh, I didn't know there was a D star repeater there. You quickly save it. That's scanning. It's different. And then you can record it. You can leave it scanning when you leave the house. Leave it scanning. Come home and you can look at what things have been recorded. And that's all scanners, as far as I can see. It's a different way of enjoying the the you know the radio enthusiast hobby. So create search banks. I'm going to go a bit faster now to copy a search channel to VFO. Create a group of linked search banks. We saw that. So I think that's enough. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Signal attenuator to stop overload. This is some of the me basic menus here. Look, beep, volume attenuate, contrast, backlight, which can be permanently on. Squelch, skip, resolution code. That's analog, digital, squelch, I would say. Protect, on, off. Again, that's going to stop you from... Uh, overwriting memories, RF gain, to, uh, stop overloading the front end of the, the set, you can adjust that, input characters and symbols, I'm just telling you how to type things, which is always really annoying when you use it, do it on the radio, software is a lot easier, all these different squelch types, and they're advanced because you're using different modes, but it's all there, reverse tone as well, DCS, we know about DCS, analog descrambler, yeah, B dot SCR. And this is an older set, you know, there's new, new, new like P25 DMR color codes, DMR slots, P25 NAC, NXDN, digital signal info, the D star. So it does give you all the info. Look at that at the bottom, from and to. Really, you need it to understand D star properly. Offset reception, remote. Remote mode, the receiver can be remotely controlled by a PC using a serial command. The command list can be downloaded on our website. Okay. That looks like that's definitely a separate video. Receiver settings, time and date, system settings. This is the page where you can do a full reset and firmware. The firmware update does seem quite straightforward, really. You put the file onto the SD card, you go to into the menu, go to firmware, make sure you've got a full charge battery, and, and then just update and don't turn anything off otherwise you'll be very unhappy you can adjust the beep got volume contrast backlight squelch resolution just read that protect rf gain it's all system reset full reset so all menu settings are returned to factory fault is the system full reset all are, are returned to factory default and all memory data is deleted that's the difference so with the system reset you keep your memories Okay, it displays the firmware version on number seven, serial number, which you're gonna need for certain software. So that's it, I know that was quite a long video, but you know, this is how I learn. I start off like this, uh, get myself, I watch a few videos, I get my head round the basics, so that when I do, when I've got the set in my hand, I've got an idea what I'm doing, and I highly recommend you do that as well. Thanks for watching my channel. Please like and subscribe, learning together with M0FXB.